Hello, my name is Rick Clark, and I want to share a story about a chance encounter. Um, it's a chance encounter that changed my life. It happened in 2015, and I'm really looking forward to sharing the story with you. Uh, to do so, I've got to go all the way back to the beginning. Um, I was born and raised here in Spokane, born in 1971. I was born into severe poverty. Uh, my mom and my dad got a divorce when I was one, and my dad... Uh, didn't want to be a dad, so he left, and um, it was left up to my mom to raise three of us on her own. Um, my dad made a few uh, visits over the years, but we really didn't know him, and so I didn't have that father figure to really teach me the ropes and kind of guide me through life and teach me how to be a man, and uh, I don't know how to hunt. I don't know how to work on cars, uh, but being raised by all women, I can braid hair better than just about any guy I know. Um, but yeah, I was raised by my mom and my grandma and my two sisters, and we did the best we could. We, you know, back then, um, we were on welfare, and so you would get a welfare check that would cover your rent and your utilities if you were really good at budgeting. It would also cover, uh, they would send food stamps to cover your food, your groceries for the month, but you had to be really, really good at budgeting and shopping, which we weren't. Um, and then you would get full medical insurance so we could go to the doctor whenever we wanted to and there was programs for all sorts of things being on welfare and so if you added all that up it was the same amount of money as if you would have gone and worked a full-time minimum wage job away from home and my mom tried that my mom tried to do the right thing she tried to get jobs and go work them and she would work a lot of swing shifts and graveyard shifts at these entry-level positions because she didn't have anything more than a high school education and so um, leaving three rowdy, rambunctious kids at home, it was a nightmare. We would always be calling her and bugging her. She would get in trouble at work. And so I do remember her trying several times to do the right thing and get a job. But like I said, when you could stay home with the kids and all of that stuff be covered, that's how we ended up doing it. And so at an early age, my sisters and I learned um, how to get creative when it came to food because we could never stretch those food stamps. We were always hungry by the middle of the month and I remember that being one of my just my strongest memories is that that pain in my stomach and that emptiness in my stomach and not just being hungry but not knowing where my next meal was coming from as a child that was um, detrimental and so my sisters and I would get creative we would dumpster dive uh, I remember oftentimes trying to talk friends in at school to have a sleepover so that I could go to their house and sleep uh, for the weekend you know because I knew that their families probably ate breakfast and dinner, you know, and so I would be trying to every week work on who I was going to go spend the night with. And so when that's your main focus, you live life a lot differently. And I knew that I was different. You know, other kids got to enjoy sports and go camping and skiing and go to concerts and stuff like that. And I just couldn't do that. And and I didn't understand because I had the same sense of humor. I had the same interest. I was the same age. I was the same person. I just didn't have any money. And so you know, over year after year after year, by the time I got into high school, you know, I wasn't feeling real great about myself. And I didn't understand why, because I thought I was a good person, but I didn't understand why I was not willing to, or I, I was not capable of having what other people had. And so, um, like everybody else in my family, my sisters and I all dropped out of high school, you know, it got too hard. And so in the 10th grade, I got a 10th grade education. And then I dropped out, I got my girlfriend pregnant, got a you know, had a baby and got on welfare. Um, my sisters started having children and they got on welfare. And so that cycle just continued to turn and nobody in our family was shocked or upset or mad or happy. It wasn't anything. It was just, that was the way we were headed and it was kind of expected. And so, you know, over time through my twenties and thirties with homelessness or with poverty comes a lot of other stuff like drug and alcohol addiction in the in the house, um, domestic violence in the house, uh, un unstable mental health in the in the home, constantly being out of work and struggling. Uh, those things all stem from poverty. And so that was my life through my 20s and my 30s. And fast forward to 2015, which wasn't too long ago. I'm 44 years old. I'm living in a in a trailer in Medical Lake. My landlord wants me out. I owe two months rent. A Vista has just shut off my electricity. I don't have a car. I don't have a job. Um, my third marriage was on the rocks. My wife is living in a completely different place. Um, I was at the bottom again. And I wish that I could say that was the first time I'd experienced that much struggle, but that was just the way it was. 
Um, but everything accumulated to that day. And I remember standing up and looking in the mirror and just being tired. And I looked at myself and I said, I'm not going out like this. There has to be something more for me. I cannot be just the poor guy. I think I have more to give this world. And so I took my last $10 and I got on the bus and I headed into Spokane on the public transportation system. And I was going to go to Spokane Community College and see if I could enroll in school. It wasn't anything I was excited or happy about because I hadn't touched a textbook or done math in 28 years. So I was definitely afraid of this moment, but I really felt like I had no other option. I didn't know what else to do. And luckily, my bus stopped at the plaza downtown, and I had to get onto another bus. But I had about 10, 12 minutes um, until my bus came. So I went upstairs, and I was going to get a snack and a drink. And um, I saw a man sitting outside of the store who was homeless. Um, two things really stood out. One, the severity of how homeless he was. His hair was almost dreadlocked because it was so dirty. His teeth were gone. Um, his clothes were filthy. Nobody was sitting with him. There was groups of homeless people all around, but he didn't even have a homeless person to hang out with. Like he wasn't doing well. His shoes were gone and it was March and you shouldn't be barefoot in March. And so the other thing that stood out was that he looked to be about my son's age and that just bothered me. And so I, I went up to him and I didn't know what else to say. I was nervous, but I, I, it was the first time in my life I set all my problems aside and I focused on a complete stranger and I said, Hey, are you hungry? And he looked up at me and he said, I'm starving. And I said, well, let's go. I've got 10 bucks. And so we bought Funyuns and Mountain Dew. And I, I sat with him for 10 minutes and I got to know this man. And in about, yeah, about eight minutes, I, I learned that he was dropped off in Spokane. He didn't have friends and family. He wasn't acclimating well. He was getting beat up a lot by other people on the streets. Um, the night before, he'd been robbed of his backpack. And so I said, you know what? I can't just leave you here like this. If you can meet me back here in two days at noon, right on the dot, I will bring you a backpack full of everything that you've lost. And I wrote down every size pants, size shirts, shoe size, and he shook my hand. He was super happy and, and, and gracious, and it was like, thank you very much. And I went on my way, and I went to SCC that day, and I, I ended up registering for class. I took an assessment test, and I, I passed. It was a really low score, but they promised me that other people had scored lower, and I said, that's all I needed to hear. And I was on my way back, and I, I got on Facebook, and I had about 100 friends, and I said, hey, guys, um, I just registered for class. And I'm, by the way, I met this homeless man named Jared. Can you guys help me fill up a backpack? And we filled 25 backpacks in the first 24 hours because that post blew up. It went everywhere. People were dropping off to, you know, toiletries and food items and clothing and socks and sleeping bags and tents. And so obviously I couldn't give Jared all that stuff. So I went around town with my kids and we started handing out backpacks to people experiencing homelessness. Uh, my time's almost up. So to make a long story short, that was 5,000 backpacks ago. That was the day that giving backpacks was created. Every day has been better than the, the next. I graduated with honors at Spokane Community College and my son talked me into applying at Gonzaga University, which I never thought I would ever be able to be a student there. And Gonzaga answered back with a very large, like $34,000 scholarship to get me started. I just recently graduated from Gonzaga with my bachelor degree in communications. Um, and, and Mike Rowe came, uh, some of you guys might know Mike Rowe from Dirty Jobs. He came and paid off my tuition at Gonzaga. And so uh, right now, all I want to do in life is go out and meet people where they're at and let them know that this doesn't define who they are. They may be in a bad spot, but I guarantee that that's not why they're put on this earth. They are here for a much bigger purpose. And I explain my story and say, I was living in my van four years ago. Now I'm just a graduate of Gonzaga. Um, it, it's really helped bring love and joy and compassion to the streets. Um, I'm honored to be able to do this work. It's all I want to do. And it was that one chance encounter. And to think that I almost passed that up. I almost didn't talk to that man. Um, I, I, I get chills thinking about what, what would be my life had I not done that. So it's just proof that no matter how bad your life is going, you're always able to help other people. You don't have to wait until your car is paid off and you retire. You can help people even on your worst day and it will become your most beautiful day. So that's my story. I hope it inspires and encourages you. My time is up. Thank you for listening and God bless.